Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Angel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. For latest updates, you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Mania. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. So, let's begin. Canine is the third tooth from the midline in both jaws. It's located in between the posterior and anterior teeth, hence considered the cornerstones of mouth. Canines are also called cuspids as they have a single cusp alone. Since mandibular and maxillary canine bear a close resemblance to each other, that's why in this video a direct comparison of the mandibular canine will be made with the maxillary canine while describing the tooth. Please do watch my video on maxillary canine before proceeding with this video. Let's talk about all five aspects of the maxillary canine in detail. Starting from the labial aspect, the mesiodistal dimension of the crown is less than the mesiodistal dimension of the maxillary canine. The crown length is 11 mm, which is 1 mm more than the length of the maxillary canine. The crown appears to be longer than the maxillary canine due to its 1 mm greater crown length and smaller mesiodistal dimension. The mesial outline of the crown is almost straight with the mesial outline of its root. And the mesial contact area is located near the mesioincisal angle. The mesioincisal angle is formed by the union of the mesial and incisal outlines of the chat. The mesial contact area on the maxillary canine is however at the junction of the middle and incisal thirds. The single cusp of the tooth is in line with the center of the root or the midline of the tooth. The cusp of the tooth has a mesial and a distal cuspal slopes. As observed here, the mesial cuspal slope is shorter than the distal cuspal slopes of the crown. The distal contact area is located at the junction of the middle and incisal third, which in the maxillary canine is located in the middle of the middle third. The labial ridge which makes the middle lobe of the tooth on the labial surface and is a continuation of the cusp tip on the labial surface is less prominent when compared with the labial ridge of the maxillary canine. The incisal third of the crown is slightly flattened mesial and distal to the labial ridge, making the developmental depressions less prominent on the labial surface of the mandibular canines. The root length is about 1 to 2 mm shorter than the maxillary canine. The root of the mandibular canine is thinner than the root of the maxillary canines. The root ends as a sharp pointed apex. Root curvatures are infrequent. If present, the curvature is often in a mesial direction, as shown here. The lingual surface of the crown is flatter and almost resembles lingual surface of the mandibular incisors. This feature is opposite of the maxillary canine, where we had prominent concavities and convexities on the lingual surface. The convexity formed here by the cingulum is smooth and poorly developed in the mandibular canine. The mesial and distal marginal ridges are less distinct and so is the mesial and distal cuspal ridges. The lingual ridge which extends down from the cusp tip on the lingual surface is also less prominent compared with the maxillary canine. It is however raised at the incisal third only. From the mesial aspect, the labial outline of the crown is less convex than the labial outline of the maxillary canine, and this is because of the less prominent labial ridge in the mandibular canine. The cingulum is not so pronounced, and the crown at its incisal third is thinner labiolingually, which makes the cusp appear more pointed. The tip of the cusp is nearly centered over the root. 
If curvature of the crown tip is present, it often bends slightly lingual to the midline. The cuspal tip in the maxillary canine, however, lies slightly labial to the midline of the root and crown. The cervical line curves more towards the incisal portion than the curvature of the maxillary canine. The developmental depression on the mesial surface of the root is deeper than the mesial developmental depression of the maxillary canine. From the distal aspect, the tooth is same as the mesial aspect except for the less curved cervical line. From the incisal aspect, the mesiodistal dimension is less than the labiolingual dimension of the crown. The cusp tip is more likely to be inclined lingually, however, the cusp tip in maxillary canine is inclined labially. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like and share the video. Please do subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell icon to get notifications on each upcoming video. Thank you for watching.